हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल द जकी फर्स्ट कॉमर्स क्लासेस सो इन टुडे सेशन विल बी डिस्कसिंग अपॉन द चैप्टर दैट इज अकाउंटिंग फॉर शेयर कैपिटल सो दिस इज वन चैप्टर दैट मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स फाइंड इट टू बी वेरी डिफिकल्ट but if you go to see then this is one of the easiest chapters in the syllabus the only thing that you really need to know is about the journal entries okay so what i will be doing is i will be making different parts of this chapter and then uploading it subsequently like for example first i will start with the theory part then i will explain the basic journal entries then i would go to over subscription then under subscription and then so on so for every new topic there will be one new video on that all right so let's start with our chapter that is accounting for share capital so before we start with how to solve the problems in practical it is important for us to know a little of theory right in today's session we'll discuss about the types of share capital so before we discuss the types of share capital it is important for us to understand the meaning of shares okay So what are shares? Shares in simple words it indicates a unit of ownership of a particular company. Okay? So if you are a shareholder of a company, it implies that you as an investor, you hold a percentage of ownership of the issuing company. So in simple words, share indicates a unit of ownership. So this was about shares. What do you mean by share capital? So if shares represent ownership of company then share capital is the total value of shares which is issued by a company. Like for example if you have issued 100 shares at a nominal value of rupees 1 each then the share capital is rupees 100. Okay? So now here one point that you have to remember is that share capital is different to the market value of shares. It means that if you consider share capital then it represents how much money was actually used to buy those shares but the market value of shares it might mean that those shares would be worth much more if they are sold into the market so there is a difference okay market value is the value that you will derive after selling those shares into the market all right so this was about shares and share capital so now let's move on to our types of share capital the first is authorized capital so authorized capital you have to remember that it is the maximum amount of share capital that any company can issue all right the amount of authorized capital it is specified in the memorandums of association and can be changed only by following a specific procedure it means that the amount of authorized capital that you can keep into your company it is decided by the moa that is memorandum of association and memorandum of association is something that cannot be changed just like that you have to follow a specific procedure if you need to change the same for example if the authorized capital of a company is rupees 10 lakhs and the face value of share is decided at rupees 10 then the company cannot issue more than 1 lakh shares to the public all right 10 lakhs divide by 10 1 lakh so a company cannot issue more than 1 lakh shares to the public so this is authorized capital moving on to the issued capital issued capital it is that capital which is actually issued to the shareholders now this capital can be less than the authorized capital but it cannot be more than the authorized capital like for example a company's authorized capital is say 10 lakhs and the face value is rupees 10 so the company's owner decide that it only needs rupees 6 lakh as capital in the initial stages so here the company will issue only 60000 shares to the public 60000 shares because 60000 into 10 will give you 6 lakhs so issued capital it is that capital that is issued to the shareholders all right you have to remember that it can be less than the authorized capital but in no way it should be more than the authorized capital. capital moving on to the third one that is subscribed capital now this is that capital which is actually invested by the public or which is actually subscribed by the public for example a company issued 10000 shares at face value of rupees 10 per share to the public and out of this the company subscribed to only 6000 so hence the subscribed capital will be only 60000 that is 6000 into 10 which will give you 6000 rupees So subscribe capital is that capital which the public has invested in or which the public has subscribed to. So moving on to a fourth type of capital that is called up capital. So called up capital it is that portion of the subscribed capital that comprises of the shareholders payment. Okay? So the capital is not given to the company in whole at once. It makes use of a portion of the subscribed capital 
when it is required in installments so in simple words called up capital is it is that part of the subscribed capital which is called upon to pay on the shares allotted to the shareholder it means that any company may not require the whole capital at once so it may ask the shareholders to pay only that portion which is called up like for example a company initially asked for rupees 5 from its subscribers of 6000 shares so the called up capital here will be 30000 that is 6000 into 5 moving on to the fourth one that is paid up capital now paid up capital it is the portion of called up capital that is paid by the shareholder so the shareholder does not have to pay the sum requested by the company the shareholder may pay half of the called up capital that is deferred to as a reserved capital to the company so it is a total amount of capital which is actually paid by the shareholder like for example out of called up amount of rupees 5 from its 6000 subscribed shares the shareholder of 5500 shares paid the called up amount okay so the paid up capital will now be 27500 how 27500 5500 shares into 2 so this is paid up capital sixth is uncalled capital so uncalled capital it is that part of the total capital that the company has not yet called upon to pay from its shareholders it means this is the amount which the shareholders have not yet paid okay and the last one is reserve capital so reserve capital you have to remember that it is that amount which a company does not use until and unless it gets bankrupt okay so it is that part of the uncalled capital which the company reserves till the time of its liquidation so this portion of capital is not called upon during the existence or during the lifetime of the company so it means no matter what the situation is this capital is not touched upon it is touched upon only at the time of liquidation so it is kept as for the creditors of the company so this is used only at the time of liquidation so this is about the different types of share capitals so with this i have finished explaining to you all the different types of share capitals now students you may not there is no need that you know all these types of share capitals in detail but then you should know the basic meaning of the different types of capital it means what is meant by authorized capital or what do you mean by called up capital or subscribed capital and so on so you should know what it means all right so this was the reason i just started with the theory first and then i will start with the problems so in this video i covered about the different types of share capitals whereas i started with explaining the meaning of shares and share capital so in my next video we'll start with the basic journal entries all right so i hope that you have understood everything that i have explained in today's session if there are any queries or any suggestions then please put it down in the comment section thank you